Hey team, welcome aboard again. Another session with Mr. Stress Teflon author, Luke Mathers. Luke, how are you today, mate? I'm very well. Yeah, had a great day. That's good. I'll let type everyone else out there has had a big day today as well. So, mate, I just wanted to talk to you today. You, you brought up a really interesting topic yesterday uh, we're going to talk about. We're not actually going to talk about that today. We're going to talk more about social media and, you know, the unknowns. Is it good? Is it bad? Where is it at the moment? Because in your life, one of the ways to become less stressed is to control inputs and Very social media so. being one of those. Whereas now the world's running its business on platform, digital platforms. It's running its schooling on digital platforms. They're even running training programs on digital platforms and God knows what else kids are doing on digital platforms with all this spare time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a tough one. There's, there's a lot of science behind this in the last five or six years. There's been a whole heap of science about, about the effects of things like social media and screen time and all of that sort of stuff. And up until COVID-19, all of that science was pretty much saying there's nothing good about it. Yep. They were saying that uh, you know, the, the amount of issues that you got in terms of your, your rates of depression go up, your rates of anxiety go up. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that, which we can get into a little bit later. But everything about social media from the science was sort of saying, look, this isn't a good thing. Um, Nice. I look at it now and I think it's almost had a little bit of a redemption in the last in the last few weeks because let's face it, when you can't socialise and the only one you've got is social media, then social media becomes not quite as bad as what it was. So it's certainly better than nothing, in my opinion, anyway. So why all of a sudden are people reporting or acting less stressed than what they were on social media four weeks ago? I'm not sure whether they are. I haven't seen any sort of science or, or anything on that. But what I am noticing is there's a lot more, su- when you can't give support to people in person, there's a lot more support going out there in, in social media. And, and people like myself who have deliberately avoided it. Um, you know, like I, I took the, the apps off my phone. Um, I very rarely looked at it and all of that sort of stuff just because I didn't think it was something that was adding anything to my life. I would much rather talk to someone in person and, and that sort of stuff. Um, I look at it now and I sort of think, oh, I've actually put things on Facebook, which I haven't touched. I haven't touched Facebook in probably two years. And when I've gone, gone through it, the, the amount of things on there are really, really quite positive. You know, people driving past, you know, doing a drive-by to say happy birthday to grandma and things like that. It's, there's some pretty cool stuff on there that's, that's actually... I don't know whether it's just my feed and you probably know a little bit more about this with the algorithms of, of things like Facebook of what you see, but uh, it appears as if there's a lot more positive things on there at the moment. It's, it's, um, it's very interesting when you look at the data on some of the research, like some big studies coming out of the University of California that have looked at like 100 million Facebook users posts, et cetera. And they say things like bad weather increased negative posts by 1%. But happy moods can increase it by 1.75. So it'll be very interesting to see what people are going to do now in relation to their lives and where they're going and how they're tracking and what they're doing um, in, in relation to social media. I know for myself, since we did our first live and we talked about the inputs in the ability to, to get a lot more negativity in your life, that I backed off to that 15 minutes max a day looking at that, um, anything to do with COVID-19 or coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and to me, that's been a great, that's been great. I get a lot of information in that 15 minutes. I did try and cut that back a bit, but you do tend to get a bit caught up in the transmedia approach to where it all drives you and where the smart platforms send you to. But for me, you know, it's, um, we need to translate this into boosting mood and, and staying positive. And like, what are some steps or things that you think that people can do to make sure that happens? Um, I think one of the things about it is to make sure you're in control of your social media rather than it's in control of you. Yeah, good point. All right. And uh, it's, it's one, of the, one of the things, but the biggest thing with all of this stress Teflon stuff and everything about sort of making it so stress doesn't stick is if you can take nothing away from this Facebook Live, take this away, turn off your notifications. Yeah, all right? big, you, yeah. don't, you don't want your phone telling you when you want to look at it. You want to look at it when you want to look at it. All right. So do you think the relationship between social anxiety and social networking is going to improve or become a real issue for people over this time? Yeah, it's an interesting question, isn't it? It's, um, I, I, think, I think 
depends a little bit on what you engage in because one of the things and as a bit of a novice but having a bit of an understanding about how um, the algorithms work is when you engage with negative things you you get a lot more of that sort of stuff if you engage with people that are pushing hatred and pushing bad things you're going to get more of their stuff coming your way if you're engaging with things people that are positive and stuff like that then it's you're going to get more of those so facebook it's whole idea of what it wants you to do is it wants eyes it wants attention it wants you to keep looking at it so it's going to find out whatever you like there's a thing called operant conditioning and it's a it's a human thing that we do we repeat the things that feel good and we go away from the things that feel bad so facebook works out which things we like and just gives us more of them so there is that echo chamber that you're only really getting you know the information that that you've already said you like and do you think we're being cyber bullied by the media of the way they're portraying everything at the moment? Cyber bullying. Yeah, um, I, yeah possibly. I, I think the fact that it's just such a dominant thought in the media, and I don't know about you, but I have definitely, I, I deliberately decreased my news intake about a week ago um, when, I, when I actually looked at my phone and realised I'd looked at something like five or six hours of news. And that's unlikely just, to do that. Yeah, yeah, I don't do that ever. <laughs> But I think that's a little bit because it was so we didn't know enough about it and all that sort of stuff. You look at the news in the last couple of days and there's not really anything too groundbreakingly new about it. So, you know, the novelty wears off and stuff like that. Um, so I, I guess it, it's, it goes down to that thing about like turning off your notifications is you, you've got to decide when you want to do it. We talked the other day about having a worry hour. Yep. It's a great idea. So if you're really worried about this, pick an hour and, you know, jot down all the worries that you want to think about it and, and cram them into a shorter area as you can and then free up the rest of your day to do whatever you're doing. And so what tips have you got for people out there from a stress perspective? And obviously uh, where I'm going with this is evenings, darkness, like you, you're in a blue light, you're into not having your computer, you know, your computer or your telephone in your bedroom, mm -hmm. all these things that you talk about as part of being a stress teflon process. So people are, uh, they're on their computers, mate. They're Zoomed up all day long. They're watching more Netflix than they ever have. Like they what, are. What, what do we need to do here? I th probably the first one, because sleep is so important, both mm -hmm. for your immune system, both for your well-being, for just about everything. You know, your brain, your brain gets toxins and it gets stuff that build up during, during the day. And the rest of your body has a lymphatic system that washes all of that stuff out. And it works really, really well. Um, the part has to with your brain is it can't have fluid pumping through it all day long. It doesn't when you're asleep. So there's all these, these areas that filled up with, with, with fluid in your brain that wash out when you're asleep. If you don't sleep enough, it doesn't get cleaned out. So you don't get those, those byproducts getting washed out of your brain if you don't sleep enough. So um, there's, a, there's a chemical inside, inside your eyes called melanopsin. And melanopsin is stimulated by blue light. And it's basically a thing that's designed to make you wake up. You wake up in the morning, you go outside and you get blue light. It wakes you up. Yeah, exactly. And I love that moment every morning, just quiet. It's part of my routine. Yeah, it's a good one. And it's actually a really cool thing. If, you, if you're struggling with sleep, with you, um, there's a, a guy called Sachin Panda who wrote a book called um, The Circadian Code. And it's a really cool book. And he talks a lot about, we, we sort of think, okay, I want to start my circadian rhythms. I want to sleep better. You've got to set those things alight in the morning and going out into blue light without sunglasses on first thing in the morning um, is a really cool thing to get your, get your circadian rhythm started and then goes it through. The hassle with that is doing a lot of screen time just before you go to bed upsets that. The blue See, well, I've read some research um, to mate in that area around um, not so much the time spent on social media, but the number of times that you disrupt yourself to go to your social media. Yeah. So, say you go to bed and you're on there for 20 minutes, whatever it is, but say you go to bed and you go, I'll just look at this. Oh, hang on. What's that? I'll just look at this, put it down, pick it back up, do it again. And they're saying that's a, a big predictor of that disturbed sleep mode that people get at night. Very much so. Um, one, of, one of the things that, that happens with that is that the easiest way to fix that is don't have it next to your bed. Yeah, exactly. I don't have it next right. to my bed. Right. Um, I, I, have a, I have a concept that we've got in the new book called noise cancelling habits. And noise is basically anything around the place that distracts you from whatever you're doing and distracts you from where you want to be. Yeah. And a noise cancelling habit is something you can do once and it gets rid of that noise. And one of my favourite noise cancelling habits is I walk into my office, which is just near the garage. 
I plug my phone in in there. I leave the ringer on. So if someone really wants me, I'll hear it ring and I'll come out and answer it. But I go inside and I don't take my phone into my house. All right, and that's a noise cancelling habit. So it's something that took me three seconds to do. I go and plug the phone in and leave it there. And I don't have to think about my phone then for the rest of the night. I'd rather be a dad. I'd rather be a, a husband than, a, than be sitting there looking at Instagram and things like that all the time. So Nothing about me in the moment. <laughs> well, there are little, there are just little things that you can do that take a lot of decisions and stuff out of the equation, which I think is a really simple thing to do. Because if you all have, it's a bit like, you know, if, you, if you're sitting there and there's a pack of Tim Tam sitting on the, sitting on the table, you're going to want to eat them. But if those, they're not in the house, they're still at the shop, you're less likely to want to eat them. So same deal with, with trying to use your phone a little bit less, keeping it in another room and just, it's a noise cancelling habit. It gets so put it with the chocolate, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. they're both bad, stay away from both of them. But they're, they're, well, both of them are, are, are kind of addictive. And that, that's one of the things, you know, we've, I've, I'm sure everyone's read things about phones becoming addictive and stuff like that. And it's some really... It's, there's really true stuff. There's a, a chemical that gets released called dopamine. And I'm sure we've all heard about dopamine. And dopamine's your, your drive to thrive hormone. If you don't have dopamine, you know, things just don't happen, all right? And dopamine from, you know, I love going back to caveman times. Do, dopamine was the thing that when you saw a tree up in the distance, you saw an apple, you're hungry, you saw an apple tree up in the distance. Dopamine kept you focusing and kept going that way until you got to the apple tree, you got to the apple, you had a bite and yeah, you get big squirt of dopamine. So it feels good. Okay. Right? Phones do the dopamine. Sometimes you, your phone bings, all right? There's nothing like that bing, that ping, that little zing, little vibrate. Oh, cool. There might be something good. Yeah, it might be saying someone sending you a text saying your dry cleaning is ready. All right. But it might be something really cool. You don't know. And what dopamine is, it's that, it's that thing that says something good is possibly coming. All right. And your phones are little dopamine dispensers. They're squirting little bits of it into you the whole time. Facebook and Instagram and stuff know this. You've ever noticed sometimes when you go to load whichever bit of social media you're looking at, sometimes it pops up reasonably quick. Other times it takes three or four seconds and it's never the same. That's actually done deliberately. It's done deliberately by those big companies. They've done the science on it and they've worked out that if they can make the amount of time that it takes to, to come up, Different, it actually gives you more dopamine. That might be a bit wow. of a conspiracy theory. I'm not too it's sure. Conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Here first. Well, I'm not going to start talking about anti vaxxing or the moon landing being fake, though. <laughs> so, mate, if excessive usage is linked to relationship problems, um, lower academic achievement, less participation in oh, like offline concepts like being more present, mm -hmm. why are we saying it's okay to spend more time on social media now just because well, we're stuck at home? I'm not. So, I, I'm sort of not saying that it's okay. Write book or something, eh? no, I'm not saying, but we need social connection. One of the, one of the things in stress Teflon is you need the safety of the tribe. And so that find, overrides the fact of what is happening. Well, to a certain degree, it does. It means yeah. if you don't have a tribe, and one of the one of the issues with these days is that a lot of us in Australia, we we go into our house, we we go in behind our front doors, or we go in behind our big gates out the front, and we don't really have much connection with the people around us you know we don't live in a village anymore yep all right and in the past there's an old expression that's a, an african expression that says it takes a village to raise a child all right and we were all part of our village and we all looked after each other pretty well and we don't really do that a lot of our tribes now come from work okay and the, one of the problems is there's a lot of people who aren't at work anymore so you know they might have moved from interstate and all the people that they knew were people that they worked with they're not working with them now but things like having a WhatsApp group with your people at work to keep connected, particularly if you're a leader, those things are really important to make sure you keep your tribe together. Um, well, those... I, I, can, I can say from body science point of view, with having admin staff at home, Nathan in the Sydney office and Nathan's team, we're all traveling on trains to work. They're all at home now too. It's a lot more effort to create the same output that you yeah. want to say. Cause you know, you got to have a chat with Nathan, you've got to have a chat with Sharon, you've got to have a chat with everybody instead of everyone just being connected in like one, one, one event like we normally do. So it, it, there is a lot more stress and pressure on that. But get, getting back to um, social media platforms that we were talking about, with, all the, with everyone utilising more and more social, do you see any long-term self-esteem issues coming here? Like there's not as many influencers doing things like they used to. So that's sort of eroded a little bit out of social media these days. It's a lot more about 
what people are actually doing and what I'm right. saying. A lot more about, you know, look at what we can do for you type stuff, as in we've got training programs with all these things. Do you think? With There's people, certainly a lot more generosity out there with it there now. Is, that's it? Quite it's not more. quite so much look at me as, as yeah. in, which is lovely. Yeah, it is. That's, that's the word I'm looking for, a lot more generosity. Do you think we're going to see a better output from self-esteem when it comes to social media? Because social media, you know, no. Photoshop's people, things, people yeah. cut shit down, down the line and what they think you should do because they're an influencer is now, you know, the influencers now, I'm watching the nurses at the end of the day saying, look at my face, I've just done 24 hours straight. Mm. They're the people that are really driving what I'm doing. They're talking about life now, you know, they're talking about safety and they're talking about, please consider, like, I think a little bit that comes back to priorities as well. And, and one of the things I've, I've been talking about a lot over the last few weeks is that sort of there's two ways to look at this. And some of it's just an absolute shit sandwich and there's no other way to butter it up, all right? Yeah. But there are other things about this that, you know, that are not such a bad thing. You know, that sort of connecting with people that you haven't seen for a while, that helping the people out around you, creating communities, whether they're online or not, the communities are actually generally there to help. And I think that's actually not such a bad thing. Okay. And, but the, the thing that you're talking about, I think it will go back to that, again, that sort of curated sort of pseudo life, that highlight reel that people put up that makes it look like that. And one of the things that they, they talk about, and particularly in a lot of the research that they've done into depression and anxiety due to social media, is that whole compare and despair Thing that goes along with it um, and one of the things that you look at something like envy all right and envy is something that when someone who's very close to me has something that's higher up the the sort of order of things that you want then you really take notice of it you know what no one looks and says oh, i really envy the queen of england you know she's way too weird she's Super old. She got she's really walking weird. at ninety four. If you ask me, like. yeah, she's going all right, but none of us really want to be that. All right, you look at the guy, you know, the guy up the road that drives a Maserati, and you think, well, that's really cool. He drives a Maserati, and if driving a Maserati is important to you, then that's something that's going to um, you're going to think, I really want that, and that's where the compare and despair bit comes from. Yeah, okay. right? it, it, when you start doing that and you'll always find someone, there's always someone bigger and better or there's always someone that's a bit richer and all of that sort of stuff. It's like a lot of people that listen to this are uh, into bodybuilding. And one of the best lines I've ever heard from bodybuilding is the day I started the lift was the day I was eternally small. Uh, very true. And I, Sorry. That's stepping, right. Yeah. Stepping back on your envy spiral you were talking about before, is, is there some things we can do when we... Like, do we actually know we're getting into an envy spiral? Like, if we're sitting here and we're spending more and more time on our phones, scrolling, doing the things we're doing, and that's our new tribe because we can't go out and hang out with people, this this envy spiral, I do like that word, I've said it twice now. Do, is that is there a way to stop that? Or is there a way to, like, go, well, back off, Greg, you are in a spiral, just think about what you're doing and come out of this? Because we are connected way more. Like you said, you connected for six hours the other day. You're never on social media. No. Um, I, I think probably the easiest way to do it is just put your phone down. That's really yeah. sensible. I can't believe I <laughs> that, that just seems like probably the easiest way to stop yeah. that. Yeah. Um, is to just is put That's your phone down. That's why you're a book author and I'm sitting in an office, mate. That's- <laughs> but, the, but the other one is, to, is the, the sort of opposite to envy is probably a bit of gratitude. That sort of I'm, I'm really grateful for what I do have rather than, you know, kicking stones and, walk, and that because I haven't got what, a, what someone else has. And that moment you, you start comparing too much, you kind of lose sight of the things that you should be grateful for. And I think connecting to gratitude is probably your biggest, you know, putting the phone down and connecting with gratitude are probably the two biggest ones there. I don't know if anyone, if you ever do gratitude meditation, but it's one of those things is before you lie down and I call it mind awareness. So before you lie down and do my mind awareness, you have a couple of thoughts about gratitude before you start that. And it kind of sets the tone of, of what you're going to do during your... I do that every morning when I wake up. That's my thing when I wake up. You still at your bells? Yeah, that's downstairs when I walk out of the house. I just tap the bells and uh, say thank you to the world and wish it on a few people that might be having a bad day or... Yeah, nice. Uh, suing it's, me, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe just people, my dog. But, but yeah, it's, um, when I get up, I'm definitely... And, you know, Dr. Craig Duncan, I love listening to his Facebook lives. They're on here every day at the moment. Yeah, he's been good, hasn't he? He's throwing in heaps and heaps of self-science tech, which everyone should... Listen, that guy's a smart guy. I really um, enjoyed his deathbed scorecard. Yeah. Uh, sounds really yeah. morbid and sounds terrible, but it's I mean, not. I'll tell you what, it went, but when you sit down and go, I'm going to do this, you sit back and have a good think about yourself. Like, yeah, 
Absolutely. You know, for those people who don't have a deathbed scorecard, you're lying on your deathbed. What are you looking up at your family and thinking you'd wish you'd done? Well, his deathbed scorecard's about why aren't you doing that now? So it really does make you think, oh, holy shit, you yeah. know, that really isn't that important or I haven't spent enough time and I should do this and, you know, start Puts a bit of perspective on things, doesn't it? He does. He's very clever in the way that he um, presents his information and mm. he's, um, he's all about monitoring. So he's got long-term data on people. He's, if you're not listening to his Facebook lives, get on board. They are very, yeah, very they're really good. good. Yeah, yeah so very good. he's really good. So, mate, it's, it's not overly clear what to do. There's not enough info we can't draw any real conclusions here we just yeah, play the yeah. game stay on our social how we think we should and use it as being part of our tribe there's a couple of really little ones i think that we can do that the making it harder making you in control of it i think is a really important thing so going back to and i'm going to harp on this a little bit delete yep. um turn off your notifications yep. all right that's a big really one everyone easy. should do that i mean you don't need a phone to tell you when to look yes. at it your phone isn't designed to tell you where to look yep. at it you go to it when you want it that's that's one I'm a big fan of, of putting friction in the way of doing things that you don't want to do, all right? And Harriet talked about that in one of her Facebook Lives as well, and it's a great thing. And one of the things I've done is I've deleted the apps off my phone. So if I want to go in, I've got to go into Facebook through Safari, and then I've got to log in and do all of that sort of stuff. So you can't just hit one button and you're in. You're such an old person. <laughs> right? But that, that's okay. I wanted that. I it's wanted like a bad that. dad joke, you know that, don't you? Yeah, it is, but that's okay. You know, the kids are going, yeah, I'm going to do that today. Good and I've got two other two others that I think are really important. One is don't be afraid to delete toxic friends. Yeah, that's a good one. That one is massively important. You've got someone that's always on there, always talking about things that are just not uh, not agreeing with your values and your principles, and it just keeps coming up there. Even if it's someone who's one of your friends, that's okay. If they're yeah. if they're a, a keyboard warrior and they're doing things that you don't want to see coming up on your phone, just delete them. Or yeah. just say, I think there's a thing on Facebook where you can say, I want to see less of this. Um, that's one of them. And don't engage with hate. You know, it's really easy to look at stuff and sort of say, okay, oh, no, that's wrong. I'm going to get on and I'm going to tell them what's what. Just don't engage with it. The easiest way to, to get rid of hate is just ignore it. You don't, you don't have to engage with people who are peddling hatred out there. And both of that, you do start engaging with those people, you're going to see more of it because that's what Facebook does. It works out what you want what you engage with, and it gives you more of that because its whole purpose is to get you to engage more. Yeah, so that's, that's good advice. Delete toxic friends and don't engage in hate. And those two things, um, and by the same token as well, then click like on the on the people driving past grandma for for their birthday. Click on the ones that are that are you know sending shout outs to the the people with frontline workers and all of that sort of stuff. There's some great. There is some great stories on. Oh, there's there. some beautiful yeah. stories. Yeah. So, so stay positive, people. That's what it's about. Put the phone down, turn off notifications. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because remember, you be engaged with the people you're around. This is, this is our, our chance to sort of catch up with the people that we're very close to and re-engage with our families and friends. And that's a good thing. Nice. Mate, um, send your product plug again because that's what I'm paid to do. Yeah. I love this bad boy. Get on board. Your book, where can people get it? Uh, you can get it from lukemathers.com.au. Um, we might uh, do a bit of a package deal on these two. Yeah, bring it on. Uh, Let's uh, sure, have some details sure on that. my tomorrow. team at work want me to come up with more good ideas. They said, please, Greg, give us more things to do. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, well, let's get some stress teflon and some calm together because that that calm is fantastic stuff um yeah. you know whether you have it during the day i think i spoke the other day about having it. i have it at, if i wake up at three o'clock in the morning and can't go to sleep i have it then and i also have it for things where i need to know i stay calm i want to yeah. stay calm um because it just if you talk about with covid19 the whole flatten the curve and that's kind of what that stuff does. It flattens the, the spikes that you get in your cortisol levels. It flattens them off. You still can fire up when you need to fire up, but it brings you down nice and quickly. And that's where blueness is such a great... A and great that's all been proven in research too. That's just not you saying it. So there is published research out there on blueness. And there's a clinical dose in this little bad boy. For anyone out there who's thinking, gee, I'm grinding my teeth or I've got the, my tongue is cemented to the top of the roof of my mouth. That's stress. It is. It is. Luke, thanks for chatting again, mate. I really appreciate it. Um, what are we going to chat about tomorrow that you're not going to chat about? I haven't given it a thought. I've written a list somewhere, so I'll have a look at that. You've got a list? Yeah. We'll, um, 
Yeah, we might go through some of the characteristics. We might get into a little bit. Characteristics is a good one. I think people enjoy that. So why, why we do the stuff we do, and um, it's it's one of the key things of, of why I wrote stress Teflon because there are things that go on in our body that if we understand what's going on, we're a lot better at dealing with them. So we yeah. might talk about a few of them tomorrow. I love it. Thanks again for your time, mate. I, I appreciate it. I hope everyone else out there is appreciating. I'm getting a lot of good reviews on um, how you make me look smart. So I just want to keep keep that up, mate. That's a good thing for me. It's all relative, mate. It's all yeah. relative. <laughs> I'm glad I'm making you look smart. And everyone out there that's engaging in the body science um, media at the moment, Facebook Lives, et cetera, just thanks for being on board. I'm really glad that our team can come together at this time and deliver training sessions, yoga sessions, stress management sessions, um, self-science sessions, like we've got elite players coming on. Everyone who's – the brand's 21 years old. We love making people feel great, and I hope we're doing that. And I thank you all for being here. Cheers, mate. It's been emotional. Bye. Very emotional, Luke.